Super Fun Stuff. Welcome to Super Fun Stuff. Today I'm going to show you one of my latest projects called Enter the Warp. Enter the Warp is a wargaming terrain piece that consists of a giant warp portal. The warp portal itself consists of a double-sided infinity mirror, meaning it works on both sides. Additionally, there are modular pieces like the large steps and the sacrificial altar. I originally designed it to be used with the steps only, but decided to make it customizable to other people's likings, and just to change it up once in a while while it's on the game table. These pieces were designed with Tinkercad. It can be found on my 3D modeling store for a small price. There is the main Enter the Warp Terrain piece that contains the warp portal and the large steps. There's the big pedestals on the ends that can hold the icons and all the statues that you want. This has everything you need to create a complete warp scenery piece. And then there's a sacrificial altar add-on that further expands the Enter the Warp. This is dedicated to the Gene Sealer Cult, where they sacrifice their prey for the four-armed emperor. This add-on requires the main Enter the Warp scenery piece. Again, I'm selling these on my store for a small price. I tried to make the price as low as possible to cover the price of filament. I probably went through about two whole rolls just to get these pieces correct. I have to say though, these pieces are wickedly cool. They came out better than I thought they would. So you may ask, how did I finish these pieces? They don't especially look 3D printed, uh, no rough lines or edges, and there's a lot of organic shapes. Well, let me walk through how I put this together and what I did to finish it off to make it realistic. So let's go over what we have. There are quite a few pieces that are needed to make this thing work. What you need is glue, exacto knife, sandpaper, paints, and spackle. Yep, wall spackle. You also need two four inch acrylic glass circles, one side of mirror film, and some kind of small battery operated light. I used L wire because I think it looks really cool. My design, I added skulls and a few other things at the end, but it's totally up to you. First things first, let's print out the 3D model. Now this model is to the 28mm Wargaming scale, designed around the Warhammer 40k size. Even though GW's scale is pretty crazy at times, it's roughly around that size. Printing some of these items may take a while, specifically the stairs. They are in two pieces and they'll fit most 3D printer beds. They will require you that they, you glue them together. With some of my prints I had mess ups, and with how long they can take, I wasn't going to go back and start all over again, but that's okay. Luckily, how we are making this, we'll be covering all the errors from the 3D printing process. You can almost view the 3D printed shape almost as an outline to follow, where you're the one that puts in the details. Anyways, we print everything out, it probably takes a few days or so. Next we want to start getting our affinity mirrors put together. Get the one-way mirror film, a pair of scissors, and a marker. Take your acrylic glass, put it on top of the film, and outline it with the marker. Then take your scissors and cut the film out. So here's a little quirky thing with this type of film. This film goes on with water, there's no adhesive. So if any of the film overhangs the glass pieces, it could snag and pull off. I recommend that when you cut out the film, you make it a tad smaller than the circle that you marked. So there's no overhang. Just have to be careful not to make it too small. The 3D printed pieces that hold the glass have a little bit of overlap, so you do have some tolerance. Cut your film out, then spray your glass with water, and stick it on the glass. Smooth it out with a towel, your hands, or a squeegee. Try to get as many bubbles out as you can. It's kind of impossible, but the more it adheres, the better. We need two glass circles with the film on it, so rinse and repeat. The Infinity Mirror works with only two pieces of glass. How this works is that one-way mirror film reflects a side that has more light, which is pretty interesting. Since we're putting the light inside the portal, it makes both pieces of glass on the inside reflective which bounces back the light at each other, creating a never-ending repetitive light effect. With our glass done, now we can add our light. The middle ring has holes for the light to route through, and is enclosed by the outside rings. For this, I used L-wire and a hot glue gun. I decided to make a zigzag pattern because I like how it reflects in the mirror. It kind of gives a mesh type of feel to it. I take my hot glue gun and go around the middle ring with all the L-wire. I later fill in the spots around the L-wire with more glue to disperse the light even more. The very bottom of the middle ring is the platform, that is supposed to look like it extends from the outside in. Put your two acrylic glass pieces in the outside rings with the film on the inside and do a quick test. Sandwich the middle ring with the outside rings and turn on the light. It should be pretty obvious if it's working or not. The effect is super cool and it was very easy and cheap to make. I recommend that you don't glue these pieces together. Why you may ask? Well, what happens if your light breaks or you need to clean the glass? The outside rings will have these overlays on top. 
These overlays are spaced out around the rings to hold the ring together and look cool. I glue these around the outside of the ring in the order I want. Included in the design are full size overlays and half size overlays. I make both sides slightly different using the half size ones, but that's up to you. However, when you glue these on, make sure that the bottom of the ring fits in the stairs where the portal goes. If you glue the overlays too far near the holder, it won't fit. After overlays are on, they should be snug fit that line up with the middle ring and keep it together. With the portal ring done, now comes the fun, messy part. Remember when I said these parts are almost like an outline and it's up to you to make the details? Well, now it's time for your creativity to shine. For this, I use a plain wall spackle. You can find this stuff pretty much at any store and it's super cheap. I opted to use the pink stuff that turns white when it dries. It's helpful to know. I slathered a spackle all over my 3D print. Try to lay not too thick of layers on because it'll take longer to dry and may require you to stand more. Be careful not to put spackle on areas that go together, like the inside of the rings or the top of the stairs where it meets the, the rings themselves. Go around the stairs putting it on, then go around the outside of the rings and put the spackle on as well. I recommend removing the glass before putting the spackle on. So after I put the spackle on, I have a nice big pink mess. When it dries, it's a big white piece of mess. Once it's fully dried, you can start sanding. A light sandpaper should be all that you need. Also, you won't need a lot of power to sand this. It's all up to you how you want this to look. I had little files where I added scuffs, stairs, and a few other marks on the piece to make it more interesting. The spackle gives this nice organic look of rock without it being too static or obviously 3D printed. After that, you're gonna have a ton of dust everywhere. Your vacuum will be your friend. Take whatever paint you want and paint it up. I took a beigey color. I recommend that you don't use too nice of a paint either. They can be expensive and this is a pretty large area. I used the folk art paint from Michaels and that worked fine. I painted it, then I added a soft wash to it, then added a few dark and light highlights here and there. On mine, I also added a few skulls, some splashes of blood, and a little green mold fungus stuff around the bottom of the stairs in between small spaces. It kind of gives it the old dark damp look. And that's it. This piece comes down to how creative you can be and how you want it to look. I wanted an ancient old outside structure look, and I think I achieved that. For the sacrificial altar add-on, I did the same exact process. I used spackle, the same color, same washes, same highlights, and the same effect paints. The sacrificial altar is a nice piece because I designed it to hold the battery pack in the light as well. It's an easy way to hide it. The blood I used is the Blood for the Blood God paint. I first painted areas dark brown, then added Blood for the Blood God paint on top, then I added black wash on top, but when you do this, it takes a shine away and it darkens the color too much. So after I clear coated the whole thing with a matte finish, I went again back with the Blood for the Blood God paint and added another thin layer. That gave me my nice shine and the cool red black blood color. There you have it. After you have it all done, you can add it to your wargaming table and use it as a nice big terrain piece. The work gives an awesome effect that adds to your games too. If you watch some of my other videos, you know that I created some Gene Sealer Cult Guides with glowing eyes. They fit so perfectly with this piece, it's awesome. Thank you for watching. If you're interested in Enter the Warp Terrain piece, check out my 3D modeling store. I hope to make more add-ons in the future to keep expanding this piece. I love the idea of 3D printing with wargaming stuff, so I hope to make more in the future as well.